So this is just going completely off the top of my head. I mean, I didn't read it off Wikipedia, but if I was going to write a Wikipedia, I might say a few of these sentences. So the original Unix is AT&T Unix, and that was started in the late 60s, early 70s at Bell Labs. Right. So that's like the OG. It wasn't even open source, it's proprietary. AT&T licensed Unix to various parties in the 70s. And that led to the different Unix variants like you see Berkeley's BSD, Sun's Solaris, IBM's AIX, and there's more than just those. Now, all caps Unix, that's the trademark, which AT&T owned until the 90s. Then it sold it to Novell, which then sold the Unix business group to somebody else. But then they kept the copyright, which eventually ended up at the open group which is like a consortium of different entities. No idea if they still hold it or what. So like all caps Unix, that's Unix the trademark. Of course, there were legal disputes along the way, but those are not interesting. Back in the 80s, the GNU project began, which was an effort to create a free software Unix-like system. You probably have heard of GNU. It stands for GNU's not Unix. It's not Unix, but it's Unix-like. And it's famous for mm -hmm. many things, not just the invention of the recursive acronym, which is pretty rad and has been copied over and over again. What else does GNU do? You know, the GPL, the GNU General Public License, GNU's Compiler Core. What's GCC stand for? GNU's Compiler something. They got GCC. Of course, the core utils like LS, RM, et cetera, and more. They have their own core util that they implemented. So GNU had a lot of things going, but they didn't really have a working kernel. There was GNU Herd, H-U-R-D, which was being worked on back in the early 90s, but didn't totally work yet when Linux came around. Of course, Linus Torvalds released Linux back in 1991, and that's a kernel. So the Linux kernel is a operating system kernel. It's not an entire operating system. He released that as GPL, so it got integrated with a bunch of other GPL stuff. And then there was also the BSD Unix effort, which was released in 1992. That led to NetBSD, FreeBSD, later on OpenBSD, and I think Dragonfly, a few others. So Linux and BSD, they have more in common than they have in difference. I mean, they're very similar, but the differences are what we focus on, of course, because those are the interesting bits. That's what makes it unique. That's why yeah. we should even have more than one in the first place. But what they have in common is the Unix philosophy and the Unix architecture. The Unix philosophy is something we talk about on the show all the time. In fact, we just talked about it with Matt Ryer with his tool XBar and how it accidentally followed some of the Unix philosophy and had some awesome results from that. The Unix philosophy includes ideas like make each program do one thing well, write programs that work together, and write programs that handle text streams, because that's universal interface. So everything is text. If you can assume it's text, then you can write more simple programs that work with more things. Then there's a Unix architecture, which has the unified file system. It uses interprocess communication through pipes. We've already talked a little bit about pipes to serve as the primary means of communication. It also includes a shell scripting and command syntax called the Unix shell, which brings us kind of full circle, right? So when we talk about Unix tools or modern Unix, we are mostly referring to programs that follow the Unix philosophy, run inside the Unix architecture, and are executed from a Unix shell. This could be on BSD, this could be on a Linux distro, or it could be on Mac OS, all of which are Unix-like systems. Mm -hmm. Just off the top of my head. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. That was a good one.